What is the most worst way you got back at someone that wronged you? Story 1. I live in a very small town, so locking your car doors is not very common. One day, my friend played a prank by putting dog cow under my car seat on a hot summer day, so my car smelled terrible for a week. At this time, I was dating his sister and she would send me pics. One day I showed him a pic of just her balls and he got excited and asked me to send it to him. I figured he was going to whack off to it, so I sent it to him and then told him a few weeks later who it was. Six years later, I'm engaged to his sister and we still have never talked about it. Story 2 When I was seven, the Monica Lewinsky scandal happened, and my name happens to be Monica. You can imagine what a bunch of immature like to call me. One girl who was several years older than me, whom I never talked to before, kept picking on me and calling me Monica Lewinsky. I asked her to stop and she didn't. Keep in mind that this girl was pretty big compared to me. One day, she was playing on this jungle gym in the shape of a fire engine and was trying to balance, so I took advantage of her vulnerability and started tickling her. When I noticed she didn't like being tickled and was losing her balance, I continued to tickle, which was probably my innocent way of being violent. The girl eventually lost her balance, fell down, and broke her leg. When I saw her later on in a cast with crutches, she looked at me with this apologetic expression and never called me Monica Lewinsky again. She was afraid of me, a little seven-year-old girl. Story 3. I have one I'm about to do in a couple days. See, my parents suck. I've been taking care of them for a while, while also going to school and whatnot, and still they are trying to cheat me, pawn my things, etc. But I've become fed up with them. I'm out of town at the moment, but when I get back, the next time they ask me to walk two miles to get them a pack of cigarettes, I will walk outside, around the house, have a friend with a van come, bring my pre-packed cow out of the basement entrance, leave and stay at my friend's house for a few days until the day my train ticket is planned for, then move 2,000 miles across the country and live with another friend who just got me a job, rendering them worthless pillheads waiting for a pack of Pall Mall menthol 100s for the rest of their sad lives. Story 4. I'm super late to the party, but I thought I'd throw mine into the mix. Also, my first throwaway worthy post... My sophomore year of college, I'm stuck in a double with an insanely creepy freshman. He's into incredibly weird cow, self-acupuncture, palmistry, collecting his toe fingernails. He's also incredibly patronizing about my drinking habits, which at the time were quite tame, and extremely petty about all his stuff in the apartment. As an example, he had a TV and couch out in the common area, which he took away after my other roommates and I watched football while drinking beer one afternoon. So after a month or two of him creeping me out and being a general banana, he manages to land an equally creepy girlfriend. She's into similar things, acupuncture, the occult, and being passive-aggressive assholes to everyone else. She starts spending the night, which I would otherwise have no problem with except we're in bunk beds, and they start to fudge every night. On one hand, I'm happy that the freshman weirdo is landing some tail, but after the first few times I was pissed that she kept coming over for a luring time while I was trying to sleep. So, like any reasonable roommate, I have a talk with him about her coming over all the time, and tell him to let me know their schedule so I could sleep on the couch or somewhere else. I assume everything is resolved and we have reached an understanding, so I go out drinking. I get fairly drunk and decide to go to sleep early, around midnight. Probably around 2 or 3 a.m., I hear both of them come into the room and they climb up into the top bunk. At this point, I'm quite awake, so I overhear their conversation, which I'll summarize for brevity. Her, won't your roommate be angry that I'm here? Didn't he just talk to you about this? Him, screw him. I don't care what he thinks. He doesn't deserve my respect because he drinks. This, of course, infuriates me. So I lay there seething with rage while trying to fall asleep. They eventually start to fudge, at which point I exit the room and go to pass out on the couch. Once again, I'm trying to fall asleep. But since I'm drunk, I have to pour out the water. Conveniently located by the couch is an orange pumpkin-shaped Halloween candy, which just happens to be the perfect vessel to receive my drunken pour out the water. I release the Kraken, but also notice a jumbo-sized box of next to the couch. Since drunk logic is great logic, I decide that the perfect retaliatory action against my inconsiderate roommate would be to put a of pour out the water in his box of Cheez-Its, which I proceed to do. I shake the box up a bit to evenly distribute the urine and leave it open to air out a bit. The next morning, I go out to do stuff and return to find my roommate and his girlfriend finishing off the box of Cheez-Its. They eventually got married, and I like to think it was because of the holy bond gained by tasting my pour out the water. Story 5. My sister used to beat me up steal my birthday money, call me an unpleasant person in front of friends and girls I liked. When mom went shopping for Xmas, my sister would tell her to buy me these horrible clothes to make me look the part. Pretty much was just a total bad person to me. So every time I had to pee in the shower, I'd pee in her shampoo and body, wash all over her razor. Body sponge thing, everything. Fudge you, Vanessa. Story six, fudge throwaways. Dated a girl who I really liked, but she was always hot and cold to me. And when she was cold, 
she could really treat me like a bucket of liquid cow. It took me way longer than it should have, but I finally manned up and dumped her. She proceeded to alternately try to win me back and seduce my friends. Basically, an immature reaction from an immature person. So, couple of weeks later, I meet an amazing girl at a concert, and we start dating. This new girl is awesome, cool, fun, and alluring, but within a week of dating her, I realized something else about her. My ex had had a job the summer before, which had her basically spending the whole summer with a girl that she had developed a major complex about. Wherever the two went anywhere together, guys would always hit on this other girl and never hit on my ex. It got to the point that my ex had developed this major anxiety complex regarding this girl she worked with. By pure random chance, I had gone out and met that girl and was now dating her. The satisfaction I felt when I showed up at a party around a month after the breakup and letting X see who I was with was immense. She had a total meltdown that included crying, screaming, and ranting before screaming at the guy she came with, Take me home right now, we're leaving! To which he replied, Call a cab, psycho, I'm not taking you anywhere. It's the little moments in life that you have to cherish. Edit. Try to make the second paragraph a little less confusing. May or may not have succeeded. Story 7. My so-called best friend in primary school stole my shiny Pokemon cards. I was only six or so at the time, but that didn't stop me from being a sadistic little first grader and having older brothers. Well, let's just say I knew how things worked. Guess who found out the truth about Santa, the Tooth Fairy, and the Power Rangers all at once? Don't fudge with six-year-old me. Story 8. I've never been much of a fighter, but I had my day. I was driving on Port St. Lucie Balvidi, and this truck was tailgating me like I've never seen. I really thought he was going to hit me. I pulled over to let him pass, and he gets in front of me and starts hitting his brakes. I pulled into a convenience store to get away, and he gets out. I'm a big guy, but this dude was a bear, towering over me. As soon as I sensed he was going to swing on me after I asked what his problem was, I gave him a quick jab to the throat and watched all 400-plus LBS barrel into the ground. I quickly ran back to my car and sped away before he got up and ate me. Story 9. A buddy of mine posted an ad on CL saying that I was selling my 2-year-old Vespa for $500. Obviously, that deal was not to be passed up so throughout the day. I had about 50 people calling my cell home trying to buy my scooter. He finally took the ad down at the end of the day, and we had a good laugh. But I was plotting. The next week, I went to Google Images and found some pictures of killer home entertainment systems and super nice furniture and made a CL ad stating that I'm being deployed to Guam by the Army and my family is coming with me. I proceeded to list all of the items he was selling and gave them crazy low but not impossible prices. Xbox games for $5 each, flat screen for $150, etc. Enough to make it feel real, yet unresistible. I added a photo of his house that I snagged from Google Street View and said in the ad, The sale starts Saturday morning at 4 a.m. Please don't try to swing by on Friday as you'll promptly be turned away. See you Saturday. He was awoken at 4 a.m. on Saturday morning by a line of people all super excited for the deal of a lifetime. He had to spend the rest of his Saturday morning trying to explain to people that it was all a joke and they needed to go home. Understandably, they were pissed. I felt kind of bad for those people. They were collateral damage in our war. Story 10. I was being bullied by this two years older than me in school, but I didn't want to tell the teachers or my parents because I wanted to handle it myself. Anyway, he wasn't hitting me or anything. He was just verbally harassing me during the day. But hey, I was fine with that. I had plenty of friends to chill out with and he was a lonely bully. So we have to write a physics exam, and we all have those graphical calculators. You can write programs in them and archive them so a RAM reset can't delete the programs. Only a defaults reset can. Right before the exam, he came to me and told me to give him all the cheat programs I had. Well, what he did not know is that I prepared one with wrong formulas for that dickhead. When I transferred the program over to his calculator, I had a huge smile on my face. He got a 6 for that exam, which is equivalent to an F. Sweet, sweet revenge. De-edit. Thanks for all the upvotes, guys. I guess it's time to clarify some things. 1. This was around 5 years ago. I was still pretty young. 2. Yes, I live in Germany. The best grade there is a 1, while the worst is a 6. You can compare it to the A's and F's of England. 3. I didn't have any more problems with the bully, since I was about to change the school anyway, and those exams were the end-of-year exams. Now, in my new school, I have plenty of friends, not being bullied by anyone, partly because I changed my attitude, but also partly because when you notice some faults about yourself, you can fix them and become a better person. Meh. Story 11. I started working for an attorney in my senior year of college and continued after graduation. He wasn't particularly skilled and needlessly generated conflicts with local police. In December, he stopped paying me. Hey, yeah, sorry. Couldn't come in today. Just answer the phones. Hey, yeah, cash flow is short. 
until the underscore 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 clears on Tuesday, etc. He genuinely didn't have the money to cover what he owed me, as he'd emptied out business accounts to cover a new car. I contacted a friend who worked for a major law firm for advice on how to politely assert myself. He read part of one of my messages, got incredibly angry, and fired me right before Christmas. Fast forward to March, he wouldn't give me a W-2 to file my taxes. I contacted the IRS and state tax agency. I told the very helpful people dates of his large cash payments from clients and gave his business and personal bank account numbers. I'd done his books for a while. Oh, and I also made Ty a point to warn the IRS that he was a bipolar drunk who kept weapons around. All true. The lawyer went out of business for 18 months due to Tish fallout. I never recovered the money he owed owes me, but I did get to see him screwed, hard, publicly. Story 12. Not my revenge, but my uncle got my aunt back pretty oh no good. They'd just had their first, and he was worried my aunt was dealing with postpartum depression. So when he came home, she took a baby doll and catapulted it at the wall right in front of him. Naturally, he was freaked out, thinking she lost it and terminated the baby. She had a good laugh, but 12 years later, he got her back. He was slicing carrots and pretended to accidentally his fingers off. She was dialing 911 only to see him in a long overdue fit of laughter. He is a patient man. Story 13. Kind of messed up up, but I don't care. My ex was human garbage. She would continually beg for money and do nothing but yell at me and breathe candy. One day I just got sick of her cow. I came home from a very long day at work and noticed she had taken my Civic, a very heavily modded 94 coupe, and had gone somewhere with her friends. She forgot that I had a car tacking system on the car and could locate it anywhere to within a few meters. I found my car in downtown Seattle and had my buddy drive me there. I had a spare key and alarm fob, so I threw her spare clothes and purse in the dirty parking lot, drove home, and blocked her number before she could even call me. I even moved later that week, had been planning to for a while before this incident anyway. So I disappeared without a trace. I used to get threatening FB messages from her brother for about a month afterwards. Story 14. My brother once stole my bag of Skittles and didn't admit to it, so I bought a bag and opened it carefully so that I could reseal it. I took every Skittle, except the green apple, out and replaced them with Mam Pam Pims. The look on his face was priceless. Edit. For clarification, there were Mam PMs and green Skittles in the bag, and he ate by the handful. So no, it would not be delicious. Story 15. A couple of years ago, I had a boyfriend who was emotionally and verbally abusive to me. This boyfriend was also several inches shorter than me. I'm 5'9 inches and he is 5'3". One day I got so fed up with him I put all of his favorite foods in the pantry above the stove, a place a man of his diminutive stature could not reach. Story 16. Jesus, 1,000 comments in two hours. This will probably never get seen. Fudge a throwaway. I used to play minor hockey from the ages of 12. 17. I was a goalie, and at first I sucked. By my last year, I was playing midget B hockey, the highest level I had ever played. But the year before that, I was on a team where I had become the whipping boy, bullied in the locker room by some members of my team. I remember being pinned down and having water dumped on me a bunch one time, not too fun. Pucks at my back at practice. The main facilitator was someone named Spencer. I don't recall doing anything to be the source of his bullying, but there it was. We barely lost a game all year, partially because our team was stacked, and partially because I was becoming a pretty solid goalie. But our locker room report was obviously terrible. No team cohesion, and it all was to do with me being bullied. There were more specific examples that I can recall, just constant nonsense and not enjoying my time. For whatever reason, I decided to not mention it to anyone and just sucked it up. In hindsight, I probably should have told the head coach and things might have changed. Anyways, fast forward to the next season. Rep tryouts happened, and I was one of the four goalies to make the... I actually lost my best friend due to the fact we were both vying for the final slot, and the management chose me over him. But that's another story. Spencer failed to make the... He was in-house and I was in rep suite. Fudge off and fudge you. Our rep team was awesome. I got along with everyone and we went undefeated. I played the best games of my life and made memories that'll last forever. In the break between the regular season and the playoffs, one of our defensemen got injured. This meant that Spencer started APing with us, which is basically a tryout. Comes to practices, does drills, no games until proven. But this was still a problem. He would pucks at me with my back turned. That usually is a good way to pour out the water a goalie off, ask anyone. He would come down for shots during drills and aim at my head. I continued to ignore it. After one fateful practice, the players are in the locker room changing. I wasn't in the best of moods during this particular week, as my mom had attempted several days previous. She was in the hospital's psyche ward. Somehow Spencer had found out about this, 
and said the single worst thing he could have said. You're such a poor goalie, your mom is going to try and terminate herself again. Everyone in the locker room froze and looked at me, blood pulsing in my head. I remember focusing on untying my laces, but it was impossible because my hands were shaking so much. Spencer is done changing, so he gets up and leaves. Everyone goes back to their business, and I calm down enough to shower and clean up and head out myself. When I left the arena, my father was waiting in his car, parked in the fire lane 15 feet from the entrance. Between the car and me was Spencer. He has a stupid flipping grin on his face and says, Say hello to mom for me. At this point, I will take the time to show those who don't know what a goalie stick looks like. Pay close attention to the thicker area with a nice edge on it, the part that says Bauer. I immediately drop my hockey bag. I'm holding my goalie stick in my hands. I don't even recall making a decision. I wound up and with two hands swung the stick like a baseball bat as hard as I could into his side. It made a fantastically satisfying thump. I had hit him with the meaty part of the stick. The part that said Bauer. Spencer turtled and hit the ground and I told him to simply shut the fudge up. I picked up my hockey bag, opened my dad's trunk and threw everything inside. When I hopped in the passenger side, my father remarked, that was a bit of an overreaction, don't you think? And we drove off. Later that day, I received a phone call from a very irate Spencer's father, telling me Spencer was in the hospital with internal bleeding, broken ribs, and a lacerated spleen. So I guess I did overreact. Story 17. Wow, that was pretty brilliant. I thought mine was good, but yours takes the cake. Anyway, I too dated a cheating girl. But I'll start by saying I'm stupid and took her back after the first time. The first time she cheated it was with her ex-boyfriend. I knew it was happening, so I got her phone and got his number and I called him. He naturally didn't know anything about it, and I 100% believe him because she is a scum liar. So we set it up for her to meet him in a park, to which I'd be there too. Unfortunately, the ex couldn't follow through with it, and in the plans foiled, but her double life still blew up in her face. But the better one was I knew she was cheating on me with this dude named Tim. So one afternoon I had her come over to my house. She said she had dinner plans and wouldn't be around that night. So I wanted to fudge her one last time, so I had her bent over my bed and was flipping her doggy style. I took a Sharpie marker that I had laying on my nightstand, and while flipping her, wrote Hi Tim on her peach. Again, he knew nothing about me, and again, her life blew up in her face. Story 18. When I was around 13, 14, I used to hang out with my 21-year-old neighbors. I didn't realize at the time that all these guys would do is convince me to do stupid cow, then run away when I got in trouble. This continued until I was about 17 when I finally realized what was going on. I was furious and wanted revenge, but by the time I thought up a plan, these guys had moved. I decided I would make my move anyways. These guys were serious stoners and always had parties. I went to a party once and chilled in the back. In my car, I had five cartons of heavy whipping cream that I had purchased six months prior. I left them in the fridge until that day. I took each carton and poured one in each of the air vents. I had one carton left over, so I poured it into the AC unit. Not sure if it did anything. The smell coming from the cartons was so rancid and disgusting, I had to stop myself from barfing a few times. A few weeks later, the house was up for sale. No one would buy it because of the smell, though, or so I heard. They gave up on selling it and tried burning it down. After an investigation, the oldest brother was arrested for fraud and served one year in prison. I haven't heard anything about them since. Story 19. When I was in grad school, I lived in an apartment complex just off campus. I had a two-bedroom apartment with a pretty big living area. It was great for pre-gaming. Whenever I would receive deliveries, the FedEx or UPS delivery guy would always leave valuable packages for my apartment outside my screen door because I was on the first floor, which was quite annoying since I told them to leave them inside the building. I was taking a trip with my girlfriend, so I asked the neighbor across the hallway to bring any of my packages in for me. I had ordered some books and other valuables that would be arriving while I was gone. I left them my spare key and my neighbor said it would be no problem. Unfortunately, I returned to a problem. My apartment looked like cow. Literally, there was dog cow all over, and it looked ransacked as if there was a party. The apt was locked, and my neighbors acted like they had no idea what happened. Unluckily for them, another neighbor said that she saw them have a party two nights in a row there. These guys were hipster hippies, so I hatched a plan. I went to Michael's Arts and Crafts and bought some candle-making accessories. At home, I picked up the dog cow with planter's shovel, which was still malleable, so it must have been relatively recently shat. It was also diarrhea-type cow, so pretty liquefied and disgusting. I mixed the dog cow with lighter fluid and Pomona's universal pectin, which my girlfriend uses to make jams. It kept the cow from drying. I molded the dog cow, lighter fluid, pectin mixture, using latex gloves, around 2M80S and used a wick extension for the candle and wrapped it around the dog cow mixture. Next, I used the candle making accessories from Michael's and filled the center with my poo bomb. They left a lot of cow, so the candle was quite big. 
I made two sample candles and tested them in order to make sure it worked. The first prototype didn't have enough wax on top, so the poo was exposed too quickly and could be seen before the MADS detonated. In the end, I made the poo reside about 1.25 inches deep in the candle and only had poo wrapped around the sides of the firecrackers, so as soon as the MADS were lit, the flaming cow would be everywhere. I then sent the lavender-scented poo candle to my neighbors as a gift from a local bank. I had a box from the bank for a glass they gave my sister after opening up a checking account. Being that they were hippie-ish, they always burned incense and candles. I knew they would love it. A few weeks later, a couple of my buddies were over drinking and we heard a loud explosion. We went across the hall and knocked on the door pretending to check on them. They opened the door and it reeked. There was dog cow all over the wall and the floor, some of it burning, on the ceiling fan, in their AC window unit, and on them and their food. My buddy looks at one of my neighbors and said, oh no, what happened? He responded, I don't know, but this candle from XYZ Bank just exploded. I then say, it smells like cow. My other friend says, cow happened. We chuckle, then leave. Story 20. From a post a while back on nearly the same kind of question, I have cerebral palsy, and as a result growing up, I was picked on during grade school. During the time I was in kindergarten and sixth grade, I was forced to change schools three times because of pushing me into walls, beating me up, and generally bullying. I had to use a walker during this time to get around. Last school I changed to, I was in fifth grade, and there was this that gave me hell every day. He was easily a 200 pounds unpleasant person. My third day there, he pushed me downstairs that led into the gymnasium. I went to the ER with a dislocated shoulder. Fast forward three months later. This 200 pounds unpleasant person is standing next to the boy's bathroom door, talking to his buddies and said something to the effect of, I would never had a girlfriend because I walked like a duck. Well, it made me mad and I was never a violent nor am I violent today. I snapped that day though. I got as close as I could before he turned around and noticed it was me. Without saying a word, I swung my walker like a baseball bat that connected with his nose. To make matters worse, since I had pour out the water, poor balance, I was falling into him at the same time. As we are falling towards the bathroom door, some comes out of the bathroom and causes the doorknob to catch him in the back of the head neck. Come to find out it cracked vertebrae in his neck and paralyzed his right arm and hand. After that day, I didn't get picked on anymore. Did call me a crazy duck though. Story 21. My sister was dating this guy for a while and moved in with him about two years ago. She moved back home six months later because he assaulted her. My whole family wanted to press charges, but my sister flat out refused, saying he didn't mean to and cow like that. Fast forward a year later. The guy and a few of his friends got drunk and set off fireworks in some school buses in my hometown. Being drunk, he immediately told my sister about it, and she told me. I turned around with no hesitation and told the cops. He's still awaiting sentencing as far as I know. His friends turned on him for lighter sentences. He got kicked out of school and lost both his jobs. And I am so glad I did it. Story 22. There was a bully that got moved to our school after being kicked out of like five others, and he settled in and started picking on the on my bus. For the most part, I was just quiet and stayed away from him because I was a skinny with big glasses that the other called names because I was always reading and lugging around a pile of books everywhere. One day it must have been my turn and he knocked the books out of my hands from behind. I didn't react at all, just picked them up and waited. He'd gone through picking on everyone on the bus and the driver now had him sitting in a seat by himself towards the front. And the next week when we had pulled up to my stop, I waited to be the last off. As I passed his seat, I had five of the heaviest books I owned math, science, a huge anthology of English lit, and a couple others. I was never athletic, but I wound up all the angst and rage of every that had tolerated this fudge's reign of terror, and it was batter up time. I swung at that big unsuspecting head from behind like I was Babe Ruth trying to save some from cancer and let him have it all, and kept walking off the bus like nothing happened as the bully, who had bit his tongue and was bleeding profusely out the mouth, started to cry. His mom pulled him out of our school and we never saw him again. I think back now that the poor illegitimate must have had an awful home life to act the way he did. But I live by the premise that if someone fudge with you, your moral obligation and self-preservation states that you fudge back by a factor of 10 so that they never dream of flipping with you again. Scorched earth cow is the only thing some folks understand. Story 23. A friend pawned sold some ice fishing and hunting stuff I let him borrow while he was apparently going on a trip just under a year ago. He said he lost it all on his way back. He played it off like it was no big deal, but there was nearly a thousand dollars worth of gear. But he got a new computer that he was wanting right after he got back. So around this time of the year, we decided it's about that time. And we created several Craigslist ads saying he had free Twilight tickets. Call or text ASAP. We put it in the big metro areas where we know lots of people would be looking. 79 phone calls and 261 text messages. I saw on his Facebook, not friends, just he leaves it open because it 
helps pick up chicks. He changed his number because of this. He posted his new number. Guess who had free Justin Bieber tickets? 209 phone calls. And 719 text messages later, he had to change his number again. He posted new statuses on both times flipping his cow. I kind of like the glitter idea. Maybe it's time to become friends again. So, also, Jesus, I am a terrible person. There was this that was three or so years younger than me in HS. Short little fudge. Always trying to pick fights with me. Always trying to pick on my friends. They lived in the apartment above me and when his mom would leave for work in the morning, he would run and stomp all over the place. His mom was a POS as well, but a paranoid crackhead. Well, I overheard the telling his groupies that he couldn't because his mom thinks he's been stealing her candy. So I decided to improvise my best ability on homemade marijuana and rolled up some catnip oregano mix because I was too chicken cow to use real marijuana and lit one of them up to just get the smell in the hallway next to their door. Then I managed to quietly open their one door and place one like it fell out of his backpack and the other two in front of the door. His mom came home and all I could hear was screaming. Then I heard crashing and more screaming. So I decided to call the police. Police show up. Then the ambulance showed up. And there went that little out on a stretcher. Mom arrested. They ended up moving out shortly after. About a month and a half later, I found out he was in the class I was doing some teacher assistance work in. Get credit sitting around and grading filing papers for certain classes. He was a freshman. I was a junior. He came up to me and made some smart-ass comment. He failed that class. Teacher never reviewed anything, so I knew I was golden. Fudge you, Jake. Story 24. I worked for T-Mobile as an event rep setting up activation events at the big box stores I'd visit. My favorite manager's boyfriend offered me a job at a local T-Mobile exclusive dealer. It started off well, then he started interfering with my sales and customers, then ringing them as his. He was the manager, or I'd have a customer close to buying and he'd swoop in and close it himself. Then I got moved to salary, which was far less than I got paid hourly. $300 a week for oh no near 80 hours. He did fraud on customers' accounts, upgrading one line but taking the credits from all five and selling the other four phones as prepaid. He'd report phones out of contract as lost stolen and start new lines with new numbers for customers. I found out that he had a MySpace his girlfriend, my friend from my T-Mobile job, did not know about. He had cheated on her on about a weekly basis. This guy really dug himself a hole when he sold $3K of free RAZRs to a guy with a stolen tax ID. This guy scammed his store, and I was happy about it, considering my manager's 10% ownership was at stake. I worked there for 90 days thinking it'd get better. Clearly, my manager was the problem, and I never had direct access to the owners except through him. One day, I reported to my friends at T-Mobile Corporate everything he had done. I provided some of the account information on customers he had messed up. The store was under investigation, and the fraud was systemic. The entire company that did the franchising for this chain is now out of business. That wasn't enough. His girlfriend heard that I was out of job because one day I had just walked out. I was offered a job by another manager at her company the very next day. I had written down his MySpace URL for the account that she wasn't to find out about since he always accessed it at the store. I presented her with the information as a take a look for yourself after presenting the backstory. I was happy she was glad she could help me and done with him. His ownership and job were destroyed. I had a new job and performed top in the district. I am happy knowing that I rained hell on his peach. Aside from that, Go to a national retailer, i.e. Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, Radio Shack, Fries or the Carrier itself. This manager was the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Thankfully, my vengeance made the execution part come back at him. Edit. About a week later, I drove behind the store, set up my laptop, and reflashed the Wi-Fi router over the air, and powered down my computer when it was half complete, knowing he'd be messed up with no internet VPN capability. Story 25. The best revenge is served cold. 11 years ago, I was working almost 24-7 and trying to deal with multiple ends in the family over the period of a few weeks. No time for anything and going nuts trying to hold it all together. My now ex decided that she wasn't getting enough attention and started flipping around on business trips. Eventually, I busted her flat out, taped, remember tape? A phone conversation of her talking with her friend about having great close relationship in Florida with a bunch of guys and that was it. She knew I had the tape, so denial wasn't an option. I decided to run with the truth instead. I left. Just left. Found a new place to live and at that point, 11 years ago, simply spread a few documented facts around. Not rumors. Not pooping on someone's property. Just handing out documented facts. Mishandling money at work. Corporate state federal funds. Bad news. Misreporting consulting income on her taxes, IRS hotline, 800-829-0433 if anyone's interested. Wrote a couple of editors to publications showing where she'd plagiarized materials. We're both academics. End of career. When she was held up to paying me the equity on the house we owned at that time, 
she pled poverty and then showed up for work in a new Corvette. A few months later, she moved to California and refused any payout on the house, which on the market. I called the mortgage company directly, something they're not used to, and begged her new address out of them. They have the information and aren't supposed to give it out. But when I explained the situation, the woman at the mortgage company gave it to me. My lawyer carpet bombed my ex who simply assumed she could hide from the cow, and I had a check in my hand within the week. So then she was broke, discredited, in the cow with the IRS and her funding agencies. Good enough. End result? Not quite jail, but the end of her long-sought academic career and certainly the end of her credibility. Ten years on, she's managing a research institute out west, but nobody respects her as anything but an office stooge and money fluffer at this point. Should I have pooped on the vet? Probably, but simply the telling the truth rocks sometimes. Tried to take the high road and may have done okay. Edited to reflect time frame, correct spelling of house. Follow-up. I've gotten a lot of flame mail and a few comments indicating that I should have simply walked away and not done anything at all. Wonderful insight from the warm safety of the internet. But it should be stressed that I did not invent anything here. I simply supplied documentation of her action to interested parties. If that results in, you should feel bad because you're a banana or a petty little cow, then so be it. If it matters, I never took money from her in any fashion. There has been some commentary to that effect. I pay my bills as I go. Unfortunately, there were a couple of things that had to happen. The mismanagement of funds issue was part of a burgeoning audit of her operation. And if I'd withheld information, I would have been in violation of state and federal law, as well as campus ethics requirements. Plagiarism is absolutely unforgivable in this line of work, and I always turn it in when I find it, as occasionally still happens in grant reviews and editorship. So that's a wash. I just hadn't connected the dots so close to home. Who looks? The non-payment of my equity in the house? Should I have walked away from $17,000 out of patriarchal nobility and because she decided to hide in another state? No. Walking away cold from her personal actions is being a man. Leaving her with my cash in her pocket out of some misplaced sense of duty is ridiculous. The IRS? Well, okay. Busted. I guess I could have let that be even though she was breaking the law. I guess you had to be there. Note that I didn't ask for any whistleblower money. Money for my time and considerable physical labor, improving our house, moving costs, dislocation expenses, etc. Nor a dime more than what I'd put into the house. All of it for documented supplies and improvements. Given the circumstances, I think I trod the high road reasonably well while not letting someone slide, and all these years later still think the choices were pretty good. Story 26. A female friend of mine was assaulted by a teacher in the school she attends. She wouldn't report it out of fear for her life, but she did tell me who it was. He did horrible things to her, then threatened to terminate her if she talked. He probably would have. I learned where he lived and knocked on his door one night. He goes to sleep fairly late. When he opened the door, I stabbed him in the neck, watched him bleed out, then went home. I burned the clothes and melted the knife. Story 27. One of my roommates in my junior year took a girl he was friends with on a date. He creeped her out because he was absolutely insane. He was later institutionalized, and she refused a second date. He had a few of her belongings, CDs and DVDs, and was holding them hostage until she agreed to see him again. So, she asked me when she saw me on campus to get the back from him. I agreed, because he was being a creep and an unpleasant person to me about other things, among them using my computer as his jack-off station, getting us into cow with neighbors, and just being crazy. Now this is nuts, and we never knew how bad it was until I did this. I asked him politely for her stuff. He refused, so I took it and gave it to her at her dorm, where she was watching Malrats with her friends. I ended up watching the rest of the movie with them. When I got back, he confronted me and left angry. At this point, I need to tell you that I had broken my arm a day prior, and it was merely splinted at that point. A few weeks later, she asks me to hang out. Me, unable to refuse a cute girl with good taste in movies, accepted. When I got back, my roomie confronted me again and this time attacked me. I was able to hit him a couple times and get away, though he seriously messed up my arm up and my face was a wreck. Once my arm was casted, it was finals week. I went back to the apartment finally, but with the girl. He was using my computer for his final paper in some class. So we decided to lock him out of the room he and I shared when he went for a break. We messed up for a good few hours, loud and obnoxious, try flipping with a cast on, while he waited to get back in. When I came back out, I told him I nodded as we left to get food. But that's still not our revenge. The real revenge was that I married her five years later, and we had beautiful twin boys last month. Edit. My wife just reminded me that her ex before this guy, who cheated on her with a few different girls, was helping him with this paper was also there while we did this. Story 28. A couple years ago, whenever I went out with my friends, I'd notice any time I'd put down my cigarettes, a couple would go missing. So I decided to half-unpack one, put some gunpowder in it, not enough to hurt anyone, 
and then repack it. I left my pack out for bait and just played the waiting game. Later that night, I got to watch it blow up in one of my buddies' face. The pure look of shock and him almost himself is this one of my favorite memories. Also, no one stole my smokes after then. Story 29. My past girlfriend cheated on me, and her and her roommate at the time had gotten to that point in their lease where they weren't super fond of each other and kept some distance. Her roommate was smoking hot kind of sometimes and wasn't fond of my ex, so I decided to make a move on her. Best move ever. The look on my ex face when her roommate walked me to the door in her underwear after the first night was priceless. We proceeded to have hot, dirty, loud, close relationship almost nightly for next eight weeks until their lease was up and for a while after that. My ex even walked in on us in the living room once. Kinda dickish, but goddamn was it fun and there's no way I felt bad about it. Story 30. One time a friend pranked me by poured water on my sausage. Four years later, I got him back by putting my banana in his beer at a bar when he went to the bathroom. He drank the whole thing before I let him know. I don't forget cow like that. Edit cow took a little nap and came back and this done blowed up. To answer a couple of questions, one, it was a draft, therefore in a glass, and two, I mean sausage as in food. He did not pour out the water on my cock. That is all. Edit two. Okay, so this is how it happened. Not very exciting or anything. We were at a sports bar drinking and shooting the cow, playing pool. My buddy, who had pissed on my sausage, by the way, did it before they put it on the grill, so sort of a pour-out-the-water marinade, set his beer down to use the restroom. One of my other buddies pointed out that he had left his beer unattended and that I should fudge with it, because all of my close friends are aware that he had pissed on my sausage as well, and I had not really gotten the chance to get him back. Well, I do the first thing that pops into my head, so I grabbed his beer, hit a corner, unzipped my pants, unleashed the cock meat, and put it in his beer. I proceeded to stir his beer a couple times with the banana, resheat that bad boy, and place his beer back to where it was. When he came back, nobody said anything, and he enjoyed his newly stirred, not shaken beer. When he finished, I just asked, Remember when you pissed on my sausage? How'd my cock taste, bad person? He knew. Story 31. When I was 11, I finally got my revenge on an evil bully who had made my life hell for six years. It wasn't big and it wasn't clever. There was no plotting or planning, just pure, physical, simple, and satisfying revenge. He was riding circles around me, literally, at the park on his bicycle. He would come closer and then further away, staying just out of reach, taunting me all the while. Reddit, this guy had caused me no end of emotional and physical torment for years. Never in a way I could prove, and this was long before schools took bullying seriously. He never left a mark, but his words deep. And that night at the park, I snapped. With adrenaline-fueled speed, I jumped, leaping not where he was, but where he was going to be, extending my foot like a missile towards his bike. It connected, knocking him flying to the ground where he lay in total shock. Seeing him there on the floor, unable to run or hide, I showed no mercy. I stood over him, jumped with both feet as high in the air as high as I possibly could. If bullet time had been invented then, the cameras would have swung around me like Neo smashing an agent into a wall. But this was no simulation. When I landed, perfectly over his crotch, the scream resounded across the park and echoes through both our lives. I walked away flawlessly victorious. Yes, there were repercussions. His parents talked to my parents, apologies were made, but I was never bullied again, and I walk through life today, knowing that nobody ever runs circles around me and gets away with it. T.L. Dodecker knocked a bully off his bike and stamped on his balls. Never looked back. Story 32. A little late to this party, but here's my story. I went to a small school and homecoming week for us was always junior-senior war week. Usually, that week just consists of people rolling each other's houses and doing minor harmless pranks and one big prank. Well, my senior year, cow escalated really quickly. I'm talking people putting bags of cow in ventilation systems, slashing tires, and breaking windows. The people in my class and the class below us had some real idiots. Well, I had my core group of friends and we really didn't do much. I rolled a couple of houses and tried to keep things as harmless as possible. We rolled this one particular unpleasant person's house thinking it was all fun and games. He was pretty pissed the next day because he had to clean up all that toilet paper and I laughed at his misfortune. It was a bad move though. I didn't realize that he was flipping psychopath. The next morning, I woke up to find my dog end. I was heartbroken, went to school, and this was bragging about how he poured antifreeze in my dog's bowl. I went straight to the principal, who was already saying that she was going to expel anyone who was participating in the war, and she called the police, and we had that arrested. He went to one of those youth facilities for the bad. To a few years later, I go back to my hometown to see that thorn working a Walmart, depressed, alone, and all that good stuff. I laughed at his misfortune and he punches me, which gets him fired from his cow peach minimum wage job at Walmart. I hear he's pretty depressed now, alone, and still poor as cow. Fudge that guy. I'm glad his life is in the 
Story 33. Not really on the messed up up level, but it still makes me giggle. I was cocktailing at a super busy microbrewery that was across the parking lot from a big movie theater. Some stupid Twilight or Harry Potter movie came out that night, so we got slammed late, and it was only me working. These two punk-ass guys, just turned 21, sat at one of my tables and ran up an $80 bill drinking Long Islands. I overheard them talking about what movie they wanted to see, so I knew that's where they were headed. Fast forward to 30 minutes later, they skip out on the entire bill, left me a folded up $5 bill in the book when it should have been closer to $100. So I told the bartender who is 6, 5, and 250 pounds and intimidating as hell, let him know the two were going to a movie. He ran across the parking lot and ended up catching them in line, shook them down for all of the money they had in their pockets, and told them never to come back again. I guess the one guy was crying. It was awesome.